assessing or determining if folks were getting the kind of support that, that, that they needed in that regard. So for example, there's a whole series of questions that have been added to the engagement survey that will be asked of anybody who indicates that they've been in the field for three or fewer years. Uh, that's because the board rule says that those should be the folks that, that have a mentor. So um, the hope is that with this newer instrument, we'll have some better data coming back to us from teachers um, that will help us to better paint a picture of what's really happening for educators and give us some baseline data to work from uh, with regards to some of the responses. So you should have received an email from me about a week ago, I think, uh, wherein I included a PDF version of the questions um, so that you could take a look at that. In some of your cases, in your local context, you may wish to pull the API in and then add some of your own questions to that survey that are specific to your context to help you understand better what your teachers are experiencing. You uh, are free to do that. Please don't remove any of the questions that are already in the instrument. Um, all of that data will be valuable uh, for us coming back on, on our side. Um, and then just so that you're aware, uh, this data does get summarized and put into a report that is given to the legislature in November uh, of this year. And so um, it, the, the information does go somewhere and does get used. I, I had a whole lot of questions um, in the fall from legislative auditors who were interested in understanding better what's going on throughout the state with regard to teacher induction and teacher mentoring and retention. Uh, so there, there is some interest in the legislature in that regard. And I think it will be very helpful for us, this iteration of this survey, to really get a, a crystal clear picture as, as much as we can what teachers are experiencing in, and particularly in light of the circumstances around the pandemic that they've been dealing with in the last couple of years. Our previous instrument really didn't have a whole lot of places where teachers could tell us why they were answering some of the ways that they were. And we've tried to rectify that in the new instrument as well so that we can better understand not just what they answer, but why or what's feeding into that response. Um, just as an example, uh, if an educator indicates that they're leaving to go to another job, right, they're accepting another position somewhere, it would be useful for us to know if that's another K-12 position, if they're accepting a higher ed position, if they're going into a completely different field. So this survey instrument attempts to give us a little bit more of that information. Um, certainly, we would respond differently if we're losing 500 educators, for example, and 300 of them are going to higher ed and 200 of them are leaving the field, that's a completely different scenario than if all 500 of them are leaving education entirely. So that kind of information gives us a better lens on not just what people are doing, but why they are doing it. So my, I encourage you and I'll, re, I'll send this, uh, that PDF file of the survey out after this meeting again. Encourage you, there's a little blurb at the beginning of that that talks about um, that it's what they see when they sign in, right? It says, thank you for taking the survey and so on. The second paragraph in that particular, and maybe I'll just pull the document up here, Lindsay, let me, I do have share, screen sharing permission. So let me pull this up. It may not be a bad idea in your, as you kind of figure out how to push this out to your teachers, to include a rendition of, or even just copy paste that paragraph into the email that you send to teachers to help them understand that we really are trying to, this isn't just a, a fish or a junk email, right? That's asking them to complete another survey because we tend to do that a lot to them. Um, but that this particular instrument is being used for some pretty um, meaningful, I think, purposes. Uh, it's always helpful, I know, I have a little bit of a data analysis background, and I know that you're always really happy if you get a 30% response rate to something like this, for example, but you can improve that response rate by helping people really understand the purpose and the why behind what you're doing. So uh, encourage and, and request if you, if you would, when you push that out to your teachers that you include some sort of explanation as to why we're doing this, uh, how it will be used. That will help them, I think, feel a little bit more 
uh, inclined to respond. So I'm going to stop there and see if anybody has any questions um, that I can answer, and then I'll turn it over to the tech gurus to help you with the more technical aspects. Well, I, I'm, I always say either there's no questions because I did an amazing job of addressing them all, or you're going to leave this meeting and say, now I have a hundred questions. So I'm going to drop yeah, my email can... in the chat. There's one in the chat. Oh, I missed it. Oh, deadline for submission this year. That's a really good question. I want to make, I went back and forth on a couple of dates and then we had to get this scheduled. I believe Jimmy remind me, did I say the, we wanted to have it out on the fourth, on the seventh, I believe, and back by the end of February. Let me double check. I'm hoping to have it by, I'll get that information out because I can't remember what we find, where we finally landed on that. Um, I do want you to have like, I want us to be able to have a week to make sure everybody's got it in their systems and that we're all up and running. So I will send that information out, but I'm hoping to get it out before the first couple of weeks of March so that we don't interfere with spring breaks that are happening. Hopefully we're wrapping this up before spring breaks begin so that people aren't, because people will tune out once that for that, right? So, um, so to get back to that question, uh, Travis, I'll send that out for sure, but plan on like the end of February in the first week of March. Who all exactly does this go to? This should go to any licensed educator in your LEA. So anybody who has a license, so paraprofessionals would not be included, um, but I believe pre-K is. The response rate I'm looking for, 100%. <laughs> But I know that that's really unrealistic. Um, really, really would be grateful. I think the last iteration of this, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 9,000 responses, which for all intents and purposes is, is a good showing, but not nearly good enough. I'm hoping to have a little bit better communication this time around and, and that we could maybe double that number. So I'm hoping in the neighborhood of 10 to 20,000 uh, responses on this one. Uh, Linda, if it's done right, and that's what the tech gurus are going to help us with here in just a minute, those responses will come directly from your Qualtrics account into ours. And then once we close the survey, we can pull all of your information and you won't have to do anything. So all of your work is on the front in terms of getting it set up and loaded and distributed. And then we do all the back work, uh, pulling the data out. Um, I think, let's see, besides a report to the legislature, what do you do with this information? Um, for example, um, I'll, I'll give you one concrete example. Uh, I also head a internal USBE team that works with mentoring and teacher mentoring. Um, what what we, we've been waiting for this data, like we are eagerly waiting to see what this data tells us about the quality of experiences that our new teachers are having with their mentors, um, because we are pushing out this summer some mentor professional learning designed to help build capacity for teachers within across the state and within all schools to, to develop the skill set to help them be better mentors and to improve mentoring. So what we're going to need is some baseline data to say before we provided all of this at, for, for teacher mentors, what this is where we were at. And then uh, in the next couple of years, as we administer this survey, and also take the survey from the ex, the data from the exit survey, um, we'll have a better view um, long term as to what kind of impact we're having with regards to mentoring and how we can step that up and, and better support that. Um, so that's just one example of how the data is used outside of, of just writing a report for the legislature. Uh, admin also, uh, that's a good question. Gary, I believe I so. Cammy, I, I just. Oh, okay. 
Kami, I just included language that comes, I believe it comes from the code or the, or the board rule. And I can put the code as well as the board rule where it defines what we mean by educator. So those uh, points that I just put in the chat, A, B, C, and D is what is, what is as it is defined in the code and or rule. I think that's only showing up to the waiting room. So let me recopy that. There we go. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> so hopefully that clarifies any yes. questions. Yeah, I, if I'd thought about it for a minute, because there are questions actually that we ask the educators about their experiences with their leadership. So that wouldn't be relevant to leadership to take that. So uh, Travis, another question. Annie, do you mind if I step in for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think this is related to Ben's question. My question was, last time we, we submit, sent this, we did send it to like school counselors, to school psychologists, and they had a lot of complaints about, you know, whether it's relic, uh, re I can't think, relevant to them. Um, and so that's why I assumed based on the definition that that's answered, but Ben's question was related to the same thing. Um, there are, we have actually embedded question, a question at the beginning of this year's instrument that, that actually does include school counselors and school specialists. So that would um, get at, at the folks like the librarian and the psychologist and, and those sorts of things. So I would encourage you to include them in, in the distribution. Um, if they felt like the questions were irrelevant, that would be good feedback for us to have moving forward. Uh, but I think I'm just scanning through some of the questions here. And, and a lot of them are more directly related to teaching, but not all of them. So maybe I still would say that there's enough questions in here that talk about their, their relationship with leadership, their relationship working as part of a team and collaboratively um, that I do think apply to those folks that I would, I would include them again. Other questions? My thinking is this, if, if you're including those folks, um, we're still, in the prior, prior instrument, we had no way to filter those folks out. So we didn't have a way to say, here's what teachers are saying, here's what counselors are saying, and so on. We now do because we've added that question in as a, what is your primary capacity? Um, so I think we will actually be able to get good information from those folks. So while it may not be required based on the language of the rule, and maybe that is something that moving forward, I'll make a note of, we maybe need to clarify that a little bit more. Um, I, I wouldn't see that as bad. So here's, here's my... <laughs> Here's my way of navigating that. Based on the board rule, those are your four people, a general education classroom teacher, a preschool teacher, special ed teacher, or a school-based specialist. If, if it's outside of the scope of those four, you have no requirement to send this to those folks. But I would also think that the opinion of those other folks would be meaningful information to have. And so I would invite you to include them in that but not necessarily requiring or expecting that everybody makes that effort if you feel like it's not necessary.
Yes, yes, there is a question where they they self they self identify. In fact, they they yeah they identify as in any one of those things and and plus so that we'll be able to sift the data out and be able to look um, at the disaggregated data about who's saying what. Part of the reason we wanted to change the instrument was for that very reason. Agreed, Stacy. So, yeah, we would we would be limiting to anybody who is a licensed specialist, anybody who's who's serving as a specialist or has that kind of a title, but is not licensed, would not be expected to complete the the survey. Thanks for this question, though. It has is raised my awareness certainly. Um, on, I mean, I've, I've been with, I, I was here when the last administration of this survey was given, but like for two weeks. <laughs> so, so this is my first real go round with, with the instrument. And so I am making a note to, to clarify that language and get some clarity around exactly who we, who we're trying to gather this data from. Yeah. All right, uh, Jimmy, Lindsay, I don't know who's taking the lead on helping folks with the technical piece, but I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. So um, you should have received an email with two documents. Uh, we'll be needing those documents as we go through the implementation of the API, which will allow us to receive the data from your LEA. So there is two, there's the QSF file, and then there's a PDF file that provides instructions on how to implement the API, um, which we'll, we'll be going through together as we, uh, as we do this training. So let me show you my screen here. Um, Okay, so um, if you can all just sign into your, hopefully you're signed into your Qualtrics account. So this is the this is the document that I'm speaking of. This is we're kind of we're gonna go through it together. Um, so um, I'll give people a minute or two to maybe get oriented. Again, you want to be in your Qualtrics, your LEA. Qualtrics account, and then make sure you have the. Jimmy, we can't see your screen. Oh, you can't. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I forgot to press share. Um, there we go. Can you guys see that now? Wait, let me make sure. That, let me do that again. Um, hopefully you're seeing my screen with the browser. Yeah, we can see the API implementation steps now. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, you should have received again, this file and the QSF file. So if you like, once you have those documents, when you, um, when you download download the QSA file, um, you'll it usually goes to your because it is a special type of file, it will just simply go into your downloads. You'll probably get an error that says, um, you know, what program do you want to use or something like that. But usually it goes into your um, your downloads file. Sometimes you do have the option of saving it wherever you want. So if you are able to save it, just save it wherever you can find it. Um, and that file is again the the QSA file, which is the the file that we're going to upload into Qualtrics. Is um, it's called the USBE Engagement Survey API Final .qsf. So, um, so I'm in my Qualtrics account right now. What I need to do is um, I'm going to go to the front page. 
hopefully everybody's there now. Um, please let us know if you need any of the documents or need me to slow down. Um, so you should be in your Qualtrics account. Here at the bottom, you're gonna create a new project. Um, so if you click that button, it leads you to the screen. And here at the top, we're gonna create, um, you have the options of creating a survey, a dashboard, and this imported data. But we're gonna click here. We're gonna create a survey from scratch. If you click that button, it should open up this menu on the, on the right. And I'm simply just gonna click here again. So I wanna click on the survey button here. It opens up this menu on the right. And then I just click get started. Um, according to the PDF file here, you can. this is where you put in the name. You can name it whatever you want. Um, I'll just name it USBE Engagement Survey Test. Um, and then if you look here below where you put the name of the survey project, it asks you, it asks you, how do you want to start your survey? You can create it from a blank survey project, or you could actually, there's other options here if you click down on the click down menu. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, again, the QSF, QSF file that we sent in the email. And again, the title of that, of that file is um, USBE Engagement Survey API, API Final. When I click import a QSF file, it's gonna give me this button where it says choose a file. If I click that, um, it opens up my file folder, which you can't see probably, but I'm gonna to go to my downloads where the file is, my file is located for the educator engagement survey. So again, when you click choose file, it will open up your, um, this where you can locate the file. And so when I open up that file, it will show up right here. You notice here in the very small letters right in, underneath the button is now the QSF file. And again, there's the title of that. Once I've done that, I've selected the correct file. Um, I again, click create project. Okay, so the first, so again, just to review the steps, the first step was go into your Qualtrics account, create a new project, click survey, and then you um, go to the option where you can upload a QSF file and then locate the file that we sent. Once you've done that, it will pull up the survey. It's now uploaded, as you can see. Um, here's the intro and the general questions of the survey. and as um, Dr. Dupree explained, we've made some significant changes to the survey. Um, so once the survey is uploaded, the next step you have to do is implement the API. And the way we do this is we go here on the top left corner, you see these little icons. Um, for those that have been, these are recent changes. A couple of months ago, they changed the layout. But um, if you look here at the top, you're going to find the one that looks like just says survey flow. It's the second one below the clipboard here. Um, if you click that, it will take you to this page. Give it a minute here to upload. Okay, so you'll notice there's a green box here and there's a blue, some blue boxes down here. You're not gonna be touching any of the blue boxes. There's only one thing you have to do and that is you're gonna put here at the top where it says LEA underscore name. If you click 
on set a value now, it will open up this little, I guess, prompt here where you can put a custom value. And if you go back, if you, if you refer to this, um, to this PDF file at the top or at the bottom of the document, you'll notice that there is an appendix. So for those that haven't done this before, each LEA is, um, is a sign of uh, an ambassador, I guess, or a LEA name that we use. And so you'll notice that um, you'll just be able to uh, find your LEA name and that's what you're gonna put in that little box that just popped up. So um, if you don't know your name, just go to the PDF file and on the bottom of your appendix, um, you'll, you'll be able to find that. Usually it's um, some letter uh, number combination and then the name of your district. So for, and for training purposes, I'm, not, I'm just gonna make up a name or just make my own value. So if I go back here again, um, when you're in the survey flow, make sure you click on this custom to create this custom value. And I'm gonna just call it 999-USBE. Um, hey, Jimmy, it is not yeah. allowing any of us to click on the set of value now. Oh, it's not. Um, There's several in the chat. Some can, some can't. It's grayed out. Okay. Um, for those that do not are not able to click on the. Do you see this apply button that's live? Is it live or is it? Because um, you should be able to. Let me let me go out. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to go back and see. Let me, let me get out of here. Um, usually it grades out if you've actually already done it. So I'm, I'm not sure why that would, be, that would be the case. So let me just get out of here and try it again. And um, So Jimmy, someone even commented and said that it's there, but um, it's just taking a while. It's really slow. Okay. Probably because lots of people are using it right now, but... Oh, I see. Yeah, um, I don't know if case. that solves the graying out. Maybe it's just still loading if it's grayed out. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, mine took took a a moment to load. Um, yeah, let me increase the size of this. So I was able to. So I clicked on Survey Flow. Um, you should see this little... And then someone else said theirs was grayed out, but they were still able to click it anyway. Okay, yeah. Um, for those that don't, um, are having problems, we'll, um, let's just put a pause, because really the only step you're gonna do uh, here is that. So hopefully you can troubleshoot that right now. Um, so if I click here, um, again, one thing to keep in mind when you do input your, um, your LEA name, make sure that it's uh, exactly the way it's included in that PDF file. Um, so once you, for those that have been able to do that, hopefully everybody has been able to resolve that issue. Um, if not, we can try to troubleshoot that. So I've changed that. And then the next, the last step you do is you simply click apply here at the bottom right corner. Um, so if I click apply,
it should apply. So what I'm doing here is, is that step in the PDF file where we're implementing the API. This key little step that we just did where we put the LE name and clicked apply is what's gonna allow us to get the data from you. If it's not done correctly, we're not gonna be getting the data. And we'll, the next step here is to see if we did it correctly. And I'll show you um, what that's like. So um, we'll give this a minute. Sometimes you click apply and it applies. And so you just leave this uh, menu here. Um, I'm just gonna leave that. Um, oh, there we go. So yeah, I guess give it, I guess give it a minute. Notice how I cannot, it, it, this is, I can't do anything anymore because I've already applied the API. So um, now if I go back to the builder, okay, I'm back in the menu. And the next step, this is the last step that, um, again, upload the, the survey implement the API by going into the survey flow, inputting your LEA name and applying that. And the last step is to um, submit a test response. That test response will notify us and you're able to also see that response as well, that the, the API has, has been implemented correctly. So the way you do that is if you go here, again, you're in the builder. Um, if you click on tools, you'll see some options here. And the one I want to click on is generate test responses. Okay, so just submit one, so change this to number one. And then all you have to do is, so again, go to tools, you'll get this menu, generate test responses, and you just wanna generate one and then click start test. Now this takes a while, so just give it a minute. Um, once this is completed, you'll notice that there are here in this white space, you'll notice some uh, a message. So once you see that message, that means the process has completed. So I'll give this a minute. I've been testing this before our meeting and it usually takes a minute or two. Any questions so far in the process? Again, we, we are recording this uh, training and we also have the PDF file available. Um, so, and we're also, um, there'll be another, oh, here we go. Um, we're willing to meet with any of you one-on-one uh, -on -one if you, you need any guidance. Um, so here we go. So this message here is showing that it was submitted. Uh, it finished the survey test. So once I see that message, I close it. And I'm gonna go back, so we're done. So we uploaded the file, we implemented the API and we submitted a test response. What, if you go to the PDF file, um, I said, there's a link here in the instruction in step six, which is the step we just did. We hit the tools, we generated a test response and then we submitted it. Um, here is where you and, USVE will check to see if we are receiving data from you. So if I click here, and I'll just open a new tab. What it's gonna pull up is uh, this report. Because I submitted a test response, this report should show US 9999 slash USBE. Now it takes a while. I've noticed, as you can see, some people have already completed. When you see your name on here, you're done. There's nothing else you have to do. Uh, please uh, delete your response. That way it doesn't get um, included in all the data that we eventually are gonna analyze. So once you see your LEA name here, uh, you're ready to go. You're ready, and I guess we'll uh, determine when we'll release the service. So I think we're gonna give LEAs 
a week or two to make sure this process has been completed before it's before release it. But we'll, as Dr. Dupree mentioned, we'll provide more data, more information on that. Um, so USB is not showing, so it takes a while sometimes. So I just need to refresh. And there it is. So um, there is my response. So again, if you if you see this, you have an F, you, there's no action required of you. If it, if you do not see a test response, um, please refer back to the document and ensure that you followed all the steps. And if you need additional assistance, we're here. You can email me or Aaron, who is from Qualtrics, and um, we can help you individually identify what the problem may what the problem uh, is. So again, um, I'm noticing that some of you, there's an AC that should have the LEA name. Make sure that the, that the LEA name is exactly the way it's in that document. Um, right here, we're just seeing AC. So whoever, whatever LEA um, completed that, I would start the whole process um, again, I think. What, it, what should we do in that case? Probably delete the survey. Lindsay, what, what are your thoughts on that to correct this? I'm not sure if you can go back into the survey flow and modify that. Um, yeah, you should be able to. Okay, yeah. Yeah, for any of those that, um, as I'm seeing here, most of them are coming correctly. But if, again, double check that everything that your LEA name is showing exactly the ways in that PDF file. If it's not, okay, so there's another one here. Um, please make sure you go back into the survey flow and fix that and submit another test response. So any, any questions, those are all the steps. Um, Can I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, so I'm from Summit Academy. Um, I just wanted to make sure, do we just wait to publish or um, until those dates that we receive from you, or do we just keep it as a draft? And then once we receive those dates, we start to publish. I mean, you can publish at any time because if no one has the link, they can't take it. So I wouldn't give the link out until the it's open, but you can publish it when you're thinking about it. And as long as no one has the link, they can't take the survey. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. Again, um, here's the publish for those that are wondering. You can publish that at any time. Um, I think Dr. Dupree mentioned that you could add questions to the survey, we won't get that data, but it may be, and you don't wanna add it. Jimmy, can you show, someone asked if you could show them how to add a question at the end. Yeah. We don't wanna to touch any of these blocks. So you wanna to go to the way bottom, all the way to the bottom. You don't wanna to touch any of those blocks, otherwise it will. Um, so, you see this here, there's a block 26. I'm not sure if that's the same for everyone, but it's at the bottom. You could start working within this block and adding questions and you see this button here. You can start adding questions. I'm not gonna do it, but you, just for those that work with Qualtrics, you just, this would be your block of questions and you can create additional blocks if you want. Um, but yeah, that's what you would do. Just go to the bottom and start adding questions. Um, Tammy, what do you mean? How do we delete it? Uh, the test response. Will you show them how okay. to delete it? Of course, of course. So, um, so I'm in my survey. Um, I'm just going to go to data and analysis here at the top. When I click that, it should pull all the responses that have been submitted. Um, it takes a while for this to populate, so we'll give it a minute.
Sorry, I just refreshed. I should have them up. Any other questions while we wait for this? I will just come right back in. I got an answer on the school-based specialist and how mm -hmm. that's typically interpreted. Um, essentially, if they don't have an assignment in Cactus, they are not included in that and counselors are not. So there's a whole list of people who are, <laughs> but that Kristen is saying, basically a school-based specialist is anyone assigned as positions that typically they are not teacher of record. So I will send that list of, it's like got 17 or 20 different titles that may be assigned to folks. I'll send that out in, in email after this meeting, but that gives us a definitive answer. Counselors do not need to take this instrument um, probably wouldn't hurt if they did, but they're not required to. All right, this is some questions come through. Let me let me first show how to delete this, and then we can uh, we can address those questions. Um, so it took a while, but here we are. Data and analysis. It shows that I submitted a response today at one thirty six p.m. And if you just go to actions, you can there's the option to delete the response. So if I click that, I'll pull up this menu here and I just wanna click here. I'm sure I want to delete this response. Then you click delete this response and this process takes a while. Usually I just hide this, but you'll notice here that there's a request pending. Eventually it will delete this. Um, if you have multiple, um, responses you want to delete, you can go here with the with selected. Um, if you click there, which say if you click these, all the responses, in this case, I only have one, but if you want to delete multiple, this is the way you would delete them all at the same time. You just click with selected and it gives you this delete option. So that's the way you delete responses. Um, it looks like some of the questions have been answered. All right, well, that's all for me. Um, we can go through that again if you, or we can just answer questions. Thanks for that, Justin. Good point. Oh. oh, Jimmy, do you want to show them how to get the distribution link? Of course. Yeah. Good. I, yeah, that's for those that have been, um, I guess I'm just assuming everybody has done this before with the other surveys, like the school climate, but I know we have some new people. So, uh, or for those that need a refresher. So let me share my screen again. Okay, um, so if you go back, if you go here at the top, you'll see this tab here, title distributions. If you click there, it will take you to this menu where you have um, different options. Okay, I'm not used to this menu. Um, would it be this one here, Lindsay? Usually a different. Sorry, menu. what, Jimmy? Would it be this menu? I 
I guess I'm not used to this menu. Let me just Yeah, it's the get a single reusable link. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, that's how we keep it anonymous. Yeah. So yeah, so you'll have this menu. Sometimes a different menu shows what you have this like left hand menu, but and it usually says anonymous link. Uh, if you see that on the left, I would click anonymous link. But if you have this menu here, you'll click on get a single, a single reusable link. And what that does, oh, here we go. That's the menu I was thinking of. Um, so it, what, is it, what this does is it creates an anonymous service link. So there's no, we won't be able to tie this to anybody. Um, the, and so what you do is just copy the survey link and send it an email. However, you know, if you're gonna, however you're gonna distribute it, just copy that survey link and that's what you'll provide to the educators. And then when they get that link, they should be able to, um, I'll show you. I just copy the server link. If I go to open up the new tab and paste that, this is what the educators will see once you provide them that link. And there we go. The survey is now live. Teachers are taking it. So um, there's the intro and then, you know, teachers start filling it out. Awesome, any other questions? Yes, Savannah, we, um, that's our recommendation that we do an anonymous link to keep this confidential and private. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I would defer to some of the LEAs who have done this before to maybe provide some input to you on how to how to do that and how to increase response rates. You know, get people to fill it out, as you said, hound people. Um, Well, cool. That's, uh, I think that's all for me. Um, we have recorded this. The PDF is available for you. Um, we do have another training next week. I believe it's on the second. So you're welcome to join us at that time as well. Um, so um, yeah, that's all for me. I mean, you do not back. need to attend on the second yeah. unless you, you have further questions it, it'll be exactly the same as as we went through today so if you're good to go then you you don't need to do anything on the second yep that's correct i had a quick question that's all right um at the i'm pretty new to qualtrics i assume at the end there's some screen saying thank you for completing the survey or something of that sort okay i'm just thinking about having people bring like screenshots of that for some kind of incentive if needed <laughs> Yeah, there'll be a thing, you know, and if you go back to the data analysis, you'll be able to see how many responses you have, how many responses are in progress. Um, yeah, that, that may, I'm just thinking about having some way to verify who's completed it without having it tied to their responses and hopefully incentivizing people to finish it quickly. Right. So two questions in the chat. The first is we're, we're hoping to have the, everybody can have the survey ready to go on February 14th and we'll make it available for a full month. So administration window is February 14th to March 13th. And um, the other question was what, how long will the, the survey take? A lot of that's gonna depend on the teacher that's taking it because there are several questions that route based on certain answers. 
And there are a few extra or additional kinds of open-ended response questions, which depending on how deliberately people are, are responding to those, it may be less or more, but it, I'm anticipating about 30 minutes, no more. Uh, Amanda, so yes, um, once we, on the day that we, that is to launch, you just provide the link to teachers. Um, and then on the end date, um, we'll go ahead and probably, um, like you can close the survey, you can deactivate it on your end. What we'll be doing on our end is we'll probably uh, close it as well. And, that, and then if any teacher fills it out, we won't get that data. You'll probably still have it in your account if it's still active, the service is still active. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be closing our, on our end um, once the deadline is there, so. Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, is there, if, if the teacher is taking a survey, it's, it's about 30 minutes, can they um, work on it and then come back? Or is it in just one sitting? So that way we- yeah. no. So since it's anonymous, there's no way to track it to them so they can come back later. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, although Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. If they're in a browser, if they're in the same browser and they close it and then they use that same link in the in that computer and browser, I think it does open it up back to where they left off. Now, I don't think we it have- by, Yeah, I don't know might. if it just goes by IP though. So like if they were in their classroom, would the next classroom over, I don't know, when, I wonder if Wynn's still on, if he knows more about that. He might have left. Hey, I'm here. I was just putting. Oh some yeah, there you are. Chat. I think the default for that's a week. Um, I'm not sure how the settings are organized for this, but yeah, I think you're right, Jimmy. I think if you're coming back to the same browser, that you'll get. Uh, depending on this, it's about a week. I know. Yeah, that is. Back. You don't have to press save or anything. It would just start back wherever you left off. Yeah. Okay, hopefully we're answering on the questions. I'm, we could I'm provide a more empirical answer to how long it's going to take as soon as a few people start taking it, you know, since this uh, new version hasn't been taken yet. Um, you know, we don't have any data to look at how long, how much time people are actually spending with it. Uh, but, but once we do, it would be easier to maybe make some definitive statements about how long it'll take. Thanks for that win. Tammy, um, yes, you can publish it, but don't send out the link until the 14th. Uh, let's see. Ben asked, we have some educators that work at post-graduation school for students with disabilities. These educators fit the definition, but the survey doesn't contain a level elementary, middle, or high for them. Do you want them to take the survey? Hmm. That mean is that does that mean Ben that all of them they teach K through twelve I guess. No, it's actually students that have reached graduation age. They don't graduate uh -huh. with a certificate, and they continue for an additional four years in that school. So question two has preschool, elementary, middle, and high school. But if you want these folks to take the survey, they need another level to to designate a post high school level. Otherwise, I just won't send it to them. Yeah, we, we didn't attend to that in the survey. Um, Tammy, what are your thoughts? Should we just not collect that data or? Are, are they working with post high school students, but they're in the high school building? Is that what, what's happening? No, it, it's South Valley School. It's a completely separate entity.
I only ask because they're, the, the educators in that school would otherwise fit the definition of those that would take the survey. Right. Um, I don't know that there's a way for us to address that in the instrument now, especially since everybody's pulled it in <laughs> just yeah. now. Um, Yeah, I, I, I think that. the best answer is probably to not include them in this administration, yeah. and then we will adjust that question moving forward and appreciate yeah. you bringing that. Forward. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Dustin, you made a very good point. Yeah, there's other ways of distributing the survey. Um, and let's see where else we go. Um, Yeah, hopefully we're caught up with the questions. And again, we'll make that modification. We didn't consider it post high. Um, so we'll make, make that change next time. Stacy, I'm curious, because you're saying that the first question doesn't match people as well. Can you enlighten me on what is wrong there? Right, so what will happen is there will be nobody that responds to those and that's fine. That's another thing we can, now that we've gained clarity around that, we can pull that out too. Yeah, definitely. Those were great questions. So um, I think we'll, uh, I think we schedule this meeting for an hour. So we'll end here. Please feel free to shoot us an email.